Greetings. I'm here again to say hello to you, and I've got a very, 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 very special guest with me who wants to ask you a question about you being let down by God. I understand that there's many of you that's watching that's not in the position or the place that you really feel because of your age you should be in. You're thinking, I missed it. I'm too old. You're thinking, I am too old to do what God has called me to do. I should have done it in my 20s. I should have done it in my 30s. I should have done it in my 40s. But God has not let you down. What he has allowed you to do is to go through so you would be able to minister to those. See, God will erase the pains of your past, but he will allow you to remember so you can minister. If you've had no test, you have no testimony. And if you've not been through any mess, you don't have a message. People want to hear from people that has been through something. They don't want it just because the book says this or because someone else says that. Tell me what you've gone through. How did you get through it? Why didn't you blow your head off? Why didn't you commit suicide? Why didn't you give up? People want to know what prayers did you pray? What scriptures did you read? What is it that you did it and how did you do it where you got, didn't get stuck like Chuck, but you went on through it? You went through the fire like your pants was on fire and you came out on the other end not even smelling like smoke. So don't feel that God has ever let you down. Now you might have let God down, but God has not let you down. He called you. He ordained you. He chose you for such a time as this. So whatever that dream is, whatever the dream is, whatever that vision is, write it down, make it plain, so man can run with it for you. It's a good word. Yeah, I, you know, I have, I have a, there was a, a special church that I uh, am called to go to and preach at there in uh, uh, Virginia. And the lady, uh, it's Pastor Becky Murray great woman she uh she said she went to one year one year maybe two years ago she went to the to the church to pray um about direction it was in january direction for the church it was actually it was december going in before the first of january and she said the lord said i want you to call me and tell him this and she told me that and i said please that that's so you know obvi obviously Jesus because you didn't go seeking for for me you went seeking for you and God just interrupted and intervened and uh, it's about stuff that's starting to happen now uh, but I put that on because I'm I'm accenting on your uh, write it down and put it run for it stick it on your mirror Amen that place that I put it on my mirror so it's right there. So I can look at that and remind myself of how God looks at me, yes. well, how God, how God thinks. So um, you've got to ask yourself. There comes a time when you have to ask yourself this question. Is the glory that you're carrying worth the price that you've got to pay? Do you remember when Eli, remember he was, he was a big fellow. He was sitting on a stool, not knowing that the Philistines just stole, took the Ark of the Covenant. Just stole God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gives a whole new meaning to extol. Let's extol the Lord, okay? And, of course, you know the story when he heard he fell over backwards, broke his neck. Uh, because how could someone steal God? Let's, let's look at the plan. They moved the ark into the house of Dagon. Now, Dagon was the God that they worshipped. 
So the next day when they came to worship Dagon, the glory was here and Dagon was there. Dagon was down facing, bowing to the glory. Now, they like you and I, well, like I, I'm sure you're not as, 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 as lame as I am about this stuff, picked it back up and said, oh, it must have been a great win, it must have been this, instead of looking at the obvious. So many obvious times God came and said, my mama, mama would come to me and she'd say, son, uh, you know, how, how much longer are you going to fight the Lord? I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I had all my, I had all my, I had all my stuff out on the mirror. You know, I had piles, and I was dealing on the side and trying to make it in Hollywood, trying to make the business. And uh, I was staying in. Remember, I told you I was in Orange County. Mm -hmm. This is bef this was uh, I can't. I, this was before uh, moved to ho or Hollywood or, or right after. I don't know the time si si uh, significance, but uh, they were all right there together. So anyway. Mamma said all that to say this. Mamma walked in the room. <laughs> when she saw when she saw the drugs out there, she all the cocaine and all the lines and all the stuff. I was weighing it up and stuff. She went up and said, "Oh Lord, have mercy! God have mercy!" I, I, oh, and I tried to hide. Too late. She's already in in there. She walked over and she said, "Lord, have mercy!" She she took her hand. Flipped it up and it looked like someone threw flour in the room. I mean, it's going everywhere. Oh, Lord's going, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have mercy. I'm going to die. I'm going to have me a heart attack. I prayed for you, boy, so hard. She said, that's it, though. I'm going to pray God will arrest you. I go, no, Mamma. Don't pray for me. <laughs> Don't pray for me. Well, because I seen Mamma pray for stuff and everything she prayed for worked yeah, except for yeah. me because I, I was being hard-headed. I didn't know, see. I didn't know that. That God had worked all this out for a moment like that that mm -hmm. have my perfect attention. So I said, no, ma'am, don't say that. Don't say that. Three days later, here I am in Newport Beach City Jail. Thinking about my mamma. Thinking about your mama calling you, your sisters, brothers, your pastor saying you got to get it right. Get it right. And you've refused to listen. Hey, it's never too late never too late. unless you're dead. And then God can raise you up just mm -hmm. like he did Jonah. That's right. But the facts are, in that jail cell, that's where I had my encounter. Because unbeknownst to me, Mama is sitting in her, on her bed, and she sees me behind the bars, and she knows what's going on. Because she said, yeah. My little old mamma got me in there. <laughs> no, that's not true. I got me in there. My mamma was prophesying. And I was in the jail cell, and I was by myself. And it, it, for those of you who have never been locked up, there's something about I wasn't in prison, but I was in jail facing mega years. I, I mean, I, they caught me with the drugstore <clears throat> uh, on wheels, you know. Uh, but the facts are, here I am in Newport Beach City Jail, and I start calling on God. Because mm -hmm. I remember, I remember now, when I'd come, I'd come home, and Mom and Grandmama would be there watching TV. This strange-looking white woman with stacked-up pink hair. And the announcer was saying, live via satellite. Mm -hmm. It's time to praise the Lord with your hosts, Paul and Jan Krause. And I'd go making fun. Oh, y'all looking at these craziest white people I've ever seen, man. Oh, what's wrong with you? I can't believe that. But somehow something happened mm -hmm. because when I was in jail, the scripture, I didn't know any scripture, I thought, but I had heard, you see, mm -hmm. I had heard, I had heard it when I was over here, I was over there, I had heard it in my distress. Come on now. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. It says, in my voice entered the temple and my cry entered his ear. And the Lord came down with darkness under his feet. And I was saying, Lord, if that's you. I was quoting that scripture. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know where that came from, Lord. But if, 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 if you're the God of my mamma, I know you're a good God. Now, I need, if you was in trouble, that's what I said to him. If you was in trouble like I'm in trouble and I could help you as so you could help me, I'd do it. Now, Lord, you're going to have to do something. Right. You're going to have to do something. So I dropped to my knees and I started praying in Chinese. 
Vietnamese. Amen. Or Vietnamese or Philippinese. I was on my knees. Yeah. I had to be a knees. Yeah. No one told me now, oh, you got it, got it. Holy, let go. Ba, ba, yeah, ba, 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 ba. No one yeah. told me any of that. Yeah. No one told me that about the Holy Ghost. I didn't know. I just knew that my prayer language came to me. I didn't know what it was. I thought I'd lost my mind. And then I could hear the keys jangling and the door open and they said, Constantine. Come on now. Constantine, you been Ooh. set free. My bail was in six digits. I don't even know who got me out. Well, of course, the Lord died. Did he send an angel? I, I don't know. All I know is this. Mm. My Ooh. trial, my tri I had a trial. Say trial. Trial. A real trial. trial. And it lasted for nine months. For nine months this trial lasted. I was on trial for my life. I was facing, I'd, well, 30 years is what I was facing. I've been serving the Lord that, about that now, so mm -hmm. I'd probably be out now, you know, a real convict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I remember that. I, gotta tell, I just got to tell this one. Mm -hmm. We're going into Newport, uh, Newport Beach, uh, Orange County. Uh, that's where the trial was. And, and there was a, there was a, a, a seagull that had caught the wind. And I remember going into the jail cell, going into, not the jail cell, but going into the courthouse, looking, because I had made bail and stuff. Remember I told you they, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and I said, Lord, and it just hit me to be free like that, because I was under this for nine months, I'm thinking, I'm too cute to go to jail, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so I remember seeing that goal when I went in. And and when we came out, because we were out there waiting for it, and he, he yelled out, "The jury's back!" So they had they had uh, the results of the trial, you know, guilty or not mm -hmm. guilty. And I remember going in when I go in, and I saw that 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 seagull, and I said, "Lord, it." I didn't say it, but he heard my he heard me say, "To be free like that, Lord, Lord." And I was walking down. I said, "Lord, here, here." here. I said, Lord, I said, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And all the, that's when, that's when everybody in heaven starts standing over the banister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh-oh, he's mm -hmm. going to say it. Mm -hmm. He's going to say it. I'm saying, now, I'm already born again. Because mm -hmm. remember, I got born again in jail. But I'm saying, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Lord. Oh, Lord, I want to be like you. I just want to see like you, Lord God. I want to hear and feel like you. I feel like you. Then all the banners are looking over and they're looking at the Father. And the Father's still sitting there. He's still looking. He's still looking in there looking at the Father's hand. Is he going to get up? Is he going to get up? And because God knows I'm about to say it. What are you about to say? I'm going to get there. I'm about to say it. I'm about to say it. I'm saying, Lord God, God, oh God. And here he comes. Whatever it takes, God. And then the heavens go, got him. Yeah. Got him. Whatever it takes. Oh, oh got him. Got him. Now we can put him in the process. Yes. Ooh, Jesus, put you in the meat grinder. Yes. He thinks he's steak, but I'm going to make him hamburger. Come on. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me now? Something about that place you get into. God holds you to it. Yes. Now, how many times have you said, Lord, you must, you got a lot more confidence in me than I got in me. Because oh. I can't take this pressure anymore. I know you should put this on me to get through it, but I can't get through it. I want you to talk to those right there. Look at that camera. There's people under that kind of pressure right now. They, 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 they're destined to hear what you got to say. Well, let me just share this with you. It doesn't matter how deep a hole you're in. If you keep attempting to get to the top to get out, just don't quit. It doesn't matter how much mud. It doesn't matter how much sludge. It doesn't matter how much garbage you have to go through. Get out. Just keep climbing. Don't stop and know that your victory is on the other side. Because the day that I was in Galveston, Texas at our daily bread, bread and Sister Judy, I didn't even know she knew my real, la my real first name. And she said, Sheila, if you leave out of here today, you're going to die. Now, I said this to say this. I was leading the NA meetings and the AA meetings. I was the one giving out the chips. 
I was praying for people. I was bringing people to the Lord and, 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 and uh, laying hands on people and they were getting healed. And I had the demons inside of me. Come on. Christians have demons. Oh, yes, they, they do. They have anything oh, they want, yes, can't they? they do. But see, <laughs> I know somebody that mm -hmm. is greater than any demon. Come on now. I know someone that's greater than any drug. Uh -oh. I know someone Come on. that's greater than any abuse. Preacher. I know someone that is greater uh -oh. than anything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And that name is Jesus. Oh, Lord, and come on now. Upon God. the name of J Jesus. To the e, and to the she said to me, and I looked at her, and she always had these beautiful brown eyes. This day, Sister Judy's eyes were blue. Uh oh. And she looked at me and she said, If you go outside today, you're going to die. That Lord was 20 Jesus. years ago. I've not had a drink. I've not had a drug. I've not turned a trick. I have not done anything but served God to the best that I could serve God. Because, see, when I got sick of myself, I knew I had to do something. When I stopped playing with Jesus, mm -hmm. I knew there was something more for me because he had shown me. He had sent people in my lives. And I know that you have somebody that has spoken into your life there you go. something bigger bigger come on mega big that you could ever hope dream or ask for what they spoke it into your life because it's going to happen you can't run and keep running and keep running because see god's going to meet you right where you're at if you're in the dope house god's going to meet you in the dope house if you're down there writing bad checks god's going to meet you at the cash register if you're doing whatever <laughs> you're doing god's going to meet you there so stop running surrender surrender because there's hope after dope and there's love far more than what you could ever dream of that's waiting. And people are waiting for you to write the book. They're waiting for you to preach your first sermon. They're waiting for you to surrender so they can say, well, I remember her when she was. And I remember him when he was. Well, look at where God has you now. Look at what God is doing, because if we're a new creature and we've been transformed, see, upon salvation, your spirit man is taken care of. But you've got that soul, that soul, your mind, your will, your emotions that is still hurting. That's where the demons lie. That's where they hide. And you've got to get that wounded soul. You've got to get away from offense. You've got to get away from unforgiveness. You've got to uh, you've got to forgive. You listening right now? Go on and forgive that ex-husband. Come on. Go ahead and forgive that ex-boss, that supervisor. Go ahead and forgive that pastor, that preacher, that prophet. Go ahead and forgive them because on the other side of your forgiveness Come on. is your glory, your manifestation. Come what on. God is waiting for you to do is surrender, but you have to forgive also. And once you forgive, the doors are going to open. The doors are going to open. This is um, 5777, 2017, but in the Hebraic it's 5777. This is the year of the sword. And God is going to cut away everything that has been delaying you, that has you been denied you, that is called sickness or disease, anything that's distracted you from keeping you away from his fullness and keeping you away from his glory. He wants you to have it. Everything you need, you have. He wants you to have it. He doesn't want you to just keep talking about it. He wants you to have it and show somebody. They say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Well, it's time that you start saying so, but doing something with that say so. If you're not being fed and led where you're serving, then you need to go find somewhere else. You need, it says the study to show yourself approved, not your pastor. So if you're not getting fed where you're at, go to where you're being fed. It says <clears throat> show yourself uh, approved, rightfully yes, dividing the word of God. Doesn't it say that? I bless, okay, I so don't blame that's it what on him because you don't bring your Bible, because you don't read your Bible. The mm. telephone is good, but some churches don't have that Internet. So now what you're going to do, you have your phone, but the Bible's in your phone. It's time to pick this back up. Pick this up. Uh -oh. Pick this Bible <clears throat> back up. Bible back up. <laughs> And you can see <coughs> and you can read and everything that's in there is a, a process that we have to go through. God doesn't want you stuck like Chuck. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to be delivered, but he wants you to be whole. Yep. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be healed and he wants you to serve him with gladness. Chuck, would you take a couple minutes uh, 
before we go off here and, and talk about your books. All right. This is my newest <coughs> published book, and it's, scar it's A Shattered Mirror by Dr. Sugar Trask. And this is my testimony of how the demons wanted me dead while I was yet still in my mother's womb. This takes me from, it will take you from birth, my birth, to 17 years old. I'm doing it in five volumes. And this is just the introduction. How I was introduced to rejection in my mother's womb. How I was introduced to abandonment in my mother's womb. I was kidnapped at 18, taken from Dallas, Texas to Tranquility, California. This book here, it, I have a lot of men that have read this book and has gave, given me reviews on it. Because if you have been molested, you had to have a molestor. If you have been victim, you've had to have a victimizer. So if God is setting us that has been victim, victimized free, he needs to set the ones that cause the pain, the shame, and the guilt free. This one here is one of my cookbooks. Yes, you can cook. And this is really we, where now we have a lot of uh, empty <coughs> nesters. We have people, young people getting married that only know fast food. So this is a book that is going to teach you with minimum ingredients how you can cook. Now, God, what now I've prayed. Anytime that you're dealing with, <coughs> excuse me, with rejection, loneliness, uh, unhappiness, you need wisdom, you need confidence or boldness. This book right here, I've already set out all of the scriptures are in here. There's declarations in here. This book will be going into the prisons, the rehab houses, the nursing homes, and I'm praying and I want you to pray with me that it will go into the libraries in the schools as well. These are the books that God has birthed just this past year, 2016 into 2017 for me. And it's the dreams. And God will do things for you that you can't do for yourself. But everything that you can do for yourself, he's going to let you do it for yourself. But trust God. Trust the process. Right. Process is... Uh, uh, Without a process, there is no product. Amen. Amen. And you got to have a product. That's right. God is looking for some produce. <laughs> <laughs> is he not? Yes, he is. Come on now. Yes, he is. And I don't want to end up in the frying pan. Come on now. I don't want to be a devil's delight. Mm -mm. I want to eat angel food cake, not Amen. devil food cake. Forever. <laughs> but you know something about devil food cake? It's really tasty satisfies the old taster yes but there's nothing like angel food cake you know the angel food cake kept kept that prophet going for 40 days amen. got up and ran 40 amen. days amen. On, amen. Some cake. on some cake that's that's called mana burgers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mana burgers I, i'm thinking that i, I want to say this The process is to gear you up to carry the glory that the Lord puts on you. Remember we were talking about Dagon a while ago? Mm -hmm. You know the story. The next day they went in, his head was broke off, his hands was broke off. And so uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll just skip to, they, they, uh, they said, if this is God. I mean, if this is God. Yeah. If this is God, I mean, a lot of you have said, if this is God, and it's so apparent, I'm so guilty of that. I'm so, so guilty of that. But there comes a time when you just say, if this looks like God, it might be God, I'm going to risk failure. When you become more miserable than you are afraid, you're going to get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they went and found two heifers that had two calves now it's natural for a mama calf she wants to be with her calf that's that that's that instinct you yes, should say that's right and it said when they loaded the ark on the wagon on the cart they said well now if it goes to jerusalem we know it's god if it don't we know it's not mm -hmm. 
And they put the glory in there and sent the cart on its way. Of course, you know, it's headed for Jerusalem. And it says something that, I, that a lot of us miss. It said they went away lowing. Lowing. Well, now you, you, if, you, if you research the word lowing, it's in pain. Oh, 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 oh. But they kept going. Oh, knowing they had to leave something behind that they really loved. But the glory that was on the cart was worth yes. the trip. And so they kept going, lowing all the while. And I looked at that and I said, Lord, because, you know, in that same cart, that's, that's the one that uh, David's buddy tried to hold up. Remember, mm -hmm. and God baked Hebrews, fried him right there. Uh, I thought, well, well, why are you, how come when he's trying to keep you from tumping over, why? And I, I, I my spirit, my heart, my mind went back to the cows that had on a cart, and I saw it. When you put the glory on a cart, the cart has wheels, and wheels make ruts. And God don't want His glory in a rut. He wants it on high ground. He does not want you. And you know, you know what a you know what a rut is. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a it, it, it's a grave with both ends kicked out. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. He doesn't want our praise and worship to be in a rut. Amen. He doesn't Amen. want our relationship to be in a rut. He doesn't want our marriage to be in a a, a, a rut. Hey, take your wife to somewhere she's never been. How about Amen. buy her something Amen. dainty? Amen. I will not go there. But keep your love, keep your marriage happy. Keep it new. Keep it, it's worth the price. If your relationship with your church, brothers, sisters, has got into a rut, it's because you put the glory on a wagon. And the glory is supposed to be carried on your shoulders right. and right. in your heart. That's right. Just, would you make, just tell them to come to Jesus. You know, somebody might be listening today and you've had a tugging in your heart. You've been in a rut. You're in a rut with your relationship. You're in a rut with yourself. Like I said earlier, when I got sick of myself, I had to come to Jesus. And this is a time and you know that you can come to Jesus by simply.